Welcome to Hooked on Headwaters. I'm Dave. And I'm Dan. All right. And today we are at Headwaters Lake. And uh, the reason we're out here is we want to check out the channel. Um, we've had the wind blow here. We had this little storm last week, less than a week ago, Hurricane Nicole. And she blew through here. And for those who are not familiar with the lake, Headwaters is uh, it's a lake. Uh, it's not an open lake. It's it uh, has channels, navigation channels. Um, there is a bunch of other stuff under the water yeah. that can cause uh, troubles. Um, the top layer of the of the the water, um, the landscape here changes often. There are hundreds of these floating grass islands, yep. and when the wind blows, things change and the landscape changes. I've even been out times where I've uh, been fishing a couple of hours and you turn turn your head around for that first couple of seconds you say well what wait a minute what I'm where am new, I <laughs> yeah to so get your bearings so um, what we did this morning is uh, came down the this afternoon came down the channel and uh, as I said we ran into some little challenge and Dan's gonna talk about that so um we are gonna there is some video footage of our um of our journey this morning some footage about the uh, on the the blockage itself so that'll be uh part of this uh video as well yeah. so uh dan's gonna let you know what we ran into Captain dan okay so these little floating islands we keep talking about is my understanding they're actually called a mud tussock there leave it up go. to floridians to come up with a name <laughs> like a mud tussock what it is is um over time there's a lot of vegetation that dies and falls to the bottom decays and then it starts to as it decays it creates these gases and it floats to the surface and a lot of them what it is is just uh it's just mud that floats but what we ran into today is where plants have taken root and grown so a lot of it is you just some of you cannot idle through you can't get through it at all so mm -hmm. today what we found in the s canal is a certain place that's completely blocked there have been boats going through there but for me if there's a way to get around it without fighting that stuff yep. it's easier on my equipment i'll go around so at uh here's a here's a map of headwaters this being the boat ramp that direction is north so you run south down the the uh, s canal so there's there's several places that we call this the bay there's one little cut here, which I would avoid that right now because you can't get through it. Right. I know Captain Jerry was running through there after the last hurricane. And I kayaked in there. Look, the yep. story. I kayaked in there, went in. By the time I was done, on my way out, was I was blocked off. I was ready to call this guy, come rescue me. I was yeah. fortunate enough that I was able to kind of paddle, push myself back out. Yep. But uh, again, in a matter of hours, it just closed up on me. Yeah, and these things are heavy. You can't just easily move yeah. a large one. <laughs> Um, probably several thousand pounds because you got to remember you got about two foot of muck that's floating on top of the water with vegetation and all the roots in it and yep. all the other stuff that goes along with it. So at a but but so we here's the cut that comes out to the west that goes into um, goes into what some of us call Felsmere Reservoir. This will be the flagpole just for point of reference. This is the East West Canal. So this cut that goes out to the west. I couldn't get to it today without fighting to get there. But just up the way, three quarters of a mile back toward the ramp, there's a cut that goes east. You can scoot through this cut and run all the way down and you can get all the way to the east-west canal. Now the east-west canal has some blockages here, but that's okay. There's a, an old ditch you can move down here and run back to the west. Or what we did today is we came out here and I turned back to the northwest, ran out uh, in between the S Canal and there's a big island there you can run out we ran down and we're sitting about here just uh, southwest of the, of the flagpole so it's not uh, it's not a problem but again as Dave was saying things do change so you got to watch uh, mind your wind direction and what's forecast for the day mm -hmm. if you see some big floating islands that appear to might block you in just think about that I, I know some guys several years ago they actually got stuck I saw the island moving in and they didn't make it out in time and it was probably about a two acre island. The FWC actually had to come out with an airboat to get them out and it took several hours. I could yell Amazing. and talk to them but I couldn't, there was no way I could help them. Yeah. And when we say islands, these are anywhere from five feet to 
50, 60 foot. 60 foot. They're huge. <laughs> yeah, they so, are. Yeah, but you can't get out. So that, that cut out to the east is, uh, I think that's about a mile and a half, mile and three quarters down before you get, oh, excuse me, here. It's about a mile and a half from the boat ramp. Easy to get out. Um, just so you know, as you go through this little cut, um, the water's a little shallower, two to three feet in there. So be careful if you have a boat that, that uh, drafts a little more water. If you get right back up on the edge of the brush here, there's a ditch that is right along this edge. Make sure you guys can see it. Parallel. And it's six and seven foot in there. That's why I jumped up on plane and I scoot back over to the east just a little bit and run these open blocks and I try to stay away from the edges after that. So shouldn't be a problem. I think the guys will be able to get out. We're out here. Yep. And uh, yep. if we get stuck, we can always walk out. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Dan, for that update. Hope that helps you. Get out here. Fishing is phenomenal. It's late fall. We're about to go into winter. Then the spawn starts. So uh, yep. make your way down here. And if you need, if looking for a good, fantastic, wonderful guide and guy, right here, <laughs> Captain Dan Han. Check him out. He will put you on fish. Family friendly uh, charter. Um, yep. No problem bringing the kids, oh, bringing yeah, bring the on. wife, um, the stuff. I'm holding the camera. Stuff, quote, air quotes, uh, does not happen on his boat. It, it is all <laughs> a great, great experience. Yeah. So thanks, Captain Dan, and we will catch you on the next video. Right. See you guys. about a mile mile and a half down mile about a mile from the east west right here is the gut through you see oh, okay. the sign and you can see there's been boats going through there but i ain't doing that if that's the other way's open i'll run around it so where are we we are about 200 yards from the first turnout to the west in the s canal and people have been going through here but uh, there's a cut through back north of us. We can get through, run over there in the east, and run around this fence. Yep. I'll fight with it if I don't have to. <laughs> what do you think? Let's go. So what we did here is we came back to the uh, this cut here to the east. Okay, now that we've discussed and showed you on video how we navigate it around the blockages, I'm going to take it to a next level and show you on the map. I'm using Google Map. And so we started our journey from the Headwaters Lake parking lot. There's the boat ramp and we headed south on the S Canal. As we traveled south, we passed the bay, what we call the bay, and continued traveling. 
So once we got to about here, we know that we came across the first blockage. I believe there's a second one um, down this area. Um, so as you saw in the video, we turned and headed back north to this break. There's a break here where we turned east and then turned again and started running south once again. So we're running parallel at this point, parallel to the S Canal. Uh, there is enough water here, as Dan mentioned on the video, uh, four or five feet of water, so you can run on plane quite easily and work your way down to the intersection of the East-West Canal. This is the East-West Canal here. Let me back that up, uh, give you better perspective. Once again, there is the, the ramp, traveled south. Came to about this area, went back north, turned turned east, traveled south again, and now we were here. here. At this point, we turned to our west. Um, we were going to um, travel down the east-west canal, but uh, we were told there is blockages uh, somewhere in this area here. So we um, just hopped across this um, opening here and then ran west running parallel to the east-west canal uh, by the way it's very common to get these blockages here as well you can cut across these openings here you do have to watch your depth but uh, with all the rain that we've had uh, no problem cutting across uh, with that said we just decided to um, go through this break here and run across um, parallel to the east-west canal um, once we got to this uh, this intersection here, this we turned and headed down the 45. So for those of you who are not familiar with this uh, landmark, I'll call it, this is where the 45, the east-west canal, the north canal, this is the north part of the lake, and the hook on headwaters um, flagpole is located. So it's a great landmark as you're going or coming from fishing. Dan and I wound up about here where we shot the video. So there you have it. I hope this helps you navigate these uh, blockages. They uh, do occur. They occur um, occasionally, especially if that when we get strong um, easterly uh, north uh, winds. Um, so you will come across this in your travels to headwaters um, every so often. Uh, once again, hope the video helped keeps you safe and makes for a good day of fishing. With that said, um, we'll see you on the next one. Please, I ask you to subscribe, um, hit that notification button, watch for our next video. See you then.